Ladies and gentlemen, it's me. Wow. Hit it, boys! We got there. The time has come. The time has come, and if Affleck Week isn't already kicking our asses, we're going old school right now. This is very late at night. Mm -hmm. We got an episode to put out. We're burning the midnight oil for, for Affleck. And we're figuring out, not only did this sneak up on us, because one of us said, if we get to the oh, Affleck man. Week number of patrons by this time Friday, we're starting Monday. The other one saw that about five hours later and was like, why'd you do that? <laughs> Maybe that should be something that we discuss when I'm starting a new job this week. As I was well. I logged on. I was pissed at you for doing that. No, fuck <laughs> you. I logged on and I saw that you like had tweeted it out and I was I was going to like text you. I was going to be like, so when are we do an Affleck week, I logged on to Twitter. I saw like fucking <laughs> Affleck week graphic that you see up there now. And it's like. Guess what? Here are the dates locked in. And I was like, oh, no, it's official. <laughs> I was like, now we have to do like like a week's worth of content in like two days. And also it happens to be the week that I'm starting a new job. And I was like, God damn it, DJ. <laughs> but I'm happy that we're here. Yeah. And you, I mean, far be it from you. you you're not going to make Affleck week about anybody but Affleck. That's right. You just right. wish that wish that Affleck week could have been. At a different time. But I think so much of the charm is that we don't know what to do. I got up for spin class yesterday morning, and I was like, I got I got like 10 minutes to kill before I leave. What should I do? And I was like, holy shit, you should figure out what this <laughs> thing's going to be that you're about to do. You're about to do a week's worth of Ben Affleck content. Every time you guys talk about Ben Affleck, you just giggle because you're like, why do we even, what do we even know about him? I don't know, what do, we should, we should check him out one of these days. And furiously, we've been like, should we see this movie? Should we do this? But we we have a loose idea, and honestly, we can bullshit with the best of them. Yeah. So like, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. I uh, we'll, we probably won't talk about this movie on this one. We'll probably do that on tomorrow's episode, on Tuesday's episode, which is Affleck Geddon. This is uh, Affleck Origins. But I was, was watching Forces of Nature with Ben Affleck and Sandra Bullock from the period where Ben Affleck is really hot shit like mm -hmm. you want to put ben affleck in your movies he's the go-to guy watch like 40 minutes of that and i was like all right enough now i got i, I got my forces got of nature. the gist of yeah, it yeah got the gist if we talk about forces of nature i can say a couple of things now move on w what am i doing next so we are you ferociously are, you preparing. are cramming you are affleck cramming spark notesing movies by watching 40 minutes of them and quitting when really we don't necessarily need to do that because We've kind of been sitting on Affleck discussions we wanted to have anyway, because things pop up with Ben Affleck these days, and we've just said, hey, save it for for uh, Affleck week. But we're here. Thank you to the patrons, to folks that aren't doing the Patreon. We're figuring out the availability. Obviously, the patrons are going to get all this right away as it comes, but we're figuring out when we're going to throw stuff out. If you're not a patron yet, join in. It's... Y'all that made this possible. This is Affleck Week presented by the listeners, which is very cool. But we're figuring this out on the fly, and we now get to talk about the infamous It's Me. Mm -hmm. I've been, God, having to sit on that was very, very difficult. What do you think my read on the It's Me thing is? I think it makes you very uncomfortable. I think you're right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that that is very not cool. To say, oh, hey, like a celebrity messaged me on a, it was on a dating thing or something. Yeah, it was on a dating thing. He unmatched her, um, or no, he she un she, un she, she unmatched right. him because she didn't think it was actually Ben Affleck. He sent a video being like, "What are you doing? It's me." Yeah, and then she posted the video for clout. Okay, so we've got to walk back a t or we got to think too on Affleck week. Uh, Lord forgive us, we're thinking too in the middle of Affleck week because we should walk back a take. Okay. Every time we say that we're going to do thinking too, it's when we're going to walk something back. Okay. We laughed at Zac Efron, I believe, for saying that he felt uncomfortable dating because he's Zac Efron. And if he tries to date somebody, so much about it is, I'm going on a date with Zac Efron. I know everything about Zac Efron. And we were like, 
I think we were sad that he was so in his head, and we were like, it's not like that, man. You're a person. They're a person. Just get out there and date. Now that this has happened, I'm like, damn, Zach, I wasn't there for you. Yeah. That's a real That's a real thing. Yeah. I, like, got, uh, I think that if I was a celebrity, I would only date celebrities because, like, the... Not like out of like a not for status know, reasons, yeah, yeah. for like lifestyle reasons, where it's like uh, there's there's like a, we're on the s- sort of the same playing field, and there's a level of trust there. Yeah, that's sad though. I mean, there's so many people in the world, and who knows? Obviously, there's more than one one, but the, the, there's so many different people that you probably miss out on if you do that. I don't disagree with that. You probably have to. Yeah, like what? The, also, like what the hell is that girl doing? If Ben Affleck is sending you a, a video message and like he's like, "What are you doing?" Like it's it's me. Why would you Why would you capture that and post it on the internet? Wouldn't you like go back to try to get Ben Affleck? I mean, if Ben Affleck messaged me, I, my priorities, romantic or otherwise, would be more Ben like, Affleck in my life. <laughs> let's let's see a little more. Let's figure. Let's pull up this thread. <laughs> A little longer, and I'm not saying like I, I I I'm not calling this person like an asshole or anything, but I think that that's a pretty crummy move. It's got it's an asshole move. You, yeah. you don't have to say that they're an asshole, but that was an asshole move. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, we got to mention the way. Why did he say it's me like that? It's so that's so death. creepy. Why do we, that's why we're doing a, an Affleck week because of you, things. You can't like understand that. anything about Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck is a miracle. I've never thought about Ben Affleck much <laughs> until. Until we did the what are we going to do about Ben Affleck thing. There have been pictures of him for so long uh, holding Dunkin' Donuts, everybody laughing about him. And I think the, you and I share the, uh, until last week, we share a similar aversion to the, like, Boston excitement of, like, oh, there's, like, this super Boston guy being very boston Boston, Boston, Boston. And you're like, okay, I love Boston, but this just kind of weirds me out a little bit. Mm-hmm. But once we talked about Ben Affleck once... I remember the next week you were like, "Should we talk about Ben Affleck more?" That seemed like uh, that seemed like actually a pretty, uh, pretty, I think pretty was, fun thing. Was Affleck week my idea? In yes. terms of like just like we yes, should do a week said, on Affleck. Yes, you you generally most week ideas are your. That's true. Ideas. Yeah, most, <laughs> most of the week yeah. ideas are yours. I actually uh, have an Affleck week joke coming up because okay. we're gonna talk about a movie that is. Affleck weak, and by Affleck weak, I mean it's not Affleck strong because it can't pick things up. What I'm saying is, chasing Amy does not hold up. <laughs> that movie is a rough watch. It is Affleck weak because it doesn't hold up. So, listeners, if you want to skip ahead, we're gonna start to talk about chasing Amy at some point, and I'm gonna tell that joke. Okay, cool. about how chasing Amy doesn't hold up but yeah the general you, you've always wanted to do more week specialty things. weeks yeah, yeah specialty weeks and they're so daunting but yeah until somebody just throws out a tweet that we're doing it and it's a, a day away that's right you're only at that as, as that anyone might be, said that might be a fun bit just to like i wake up one day and then you just decide that we're doing a week <laughs> it starts the next day and i find out on twitter pete you know that muddy ducks week you always want to do <laughs> happy birthday buddy it starts now <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you're kicking down my door. And just, guess what, pal? You're, you're you're sitting in here. You hear Playing the video you, hear, games. you hear my uh, car lock. You're like, ah, oh, well, that's a common beeping sound. And, like you hear like the jiggling of iced coffee comes to your door. You're like, oh, oh no. <laughs> hey, buddy, it's you two week. You're like, neither of us like you two. Sorry. <laughs> You know, like, uh, all I can p- picture is, uh, you remember, like, Maury, when they would do, like, the the episodes on, like, bad kids that need to go to, like, rehabilitation camp, and they'd have, like, their drill instructors, yeah, yeah. and they'd, like, go in at, like, two in the morning and get them out of bed, and they'd be like, guess what, asshole? We're going to rehab camp! And they fucking drag them out of bed in, like, their PJs. That's what I imagine being, like, a specialty week with you, uh, that... by surprise. And it's always going to be things that... You Neither wouldn't really mind want. talking about. No, I would you imagine like you two. And yeah, like, yeah. What would be what would be good? We are we can kind of take them or leave them weeks. Um, you two might be the best example. Yeah, because like 
I don't like I don't like you two, and they never cross my mind. But I also don't dislike you. Right? Like who could dislike you two? I do like a Coldplay week. Coldplay week would be interesting, and that would be probably very educational. I hear they have a uh, uh, a Max Martin song out right now. Ooh. People are saying you got to check it out, and I'm like, I think I'm gonna listen to you two instead. <laughs> I actually did listen to you two on the way over here. Why? I was because I was at the grocery store, and they played that song stuck in a moment you can't get out of remember that song it's a i'm like you i don't love you two at all and i really don't think about them i understand they're an important band and i'm very happy for them and everybody else Affleck week off to a great start <laughs> and, <laughs> but i heard that song and i was like ah oh, yeah that was that like early 2000s heat so i listened to it on the way over here i listened to a live version as well there you go studio and live <laughs> just really binging yeah uh the only song that is in my like lexicon at this point is that stupid fucking tj Maxx song have you heard that one where it's uh it's listen to your heart by dht but it but it's for tj Maxx, and it says put it in your cart Ba, 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 I don't mind that. Ba, ba. It's like the biggest earworm, and it has just dominated my entire life for the past two days. But that's by U2? Yes. That's by U2 and... And Max Martin. <laughs> and Max Martin. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Wouldn't hate a U2 Max Martin collab. Didn't uh, Bon Jovi did it. Bon Jovi did Max Martin. They did... Boom, boom. <laughs> it's my life. That's not a Max Martin song, is I believe it? it is. Let's see. No way. I shouldn't have, it's too late. I, I shouldn't have sung that in my falsetto. I was such a coward there. But um, let's see. It's my life. Bon Jovi. Um, well, I'm seeing it's got a lot of Grammys, so it's off to a probably by Max Martin song. Songwriters, John Bon Jovi, Richie Sambora, and Max Martin. Really? Yeah. So oh, okay. if you learn anything from Affleck Week, it's that yeah, Max right. Martin <laughs> wrote and... Off to a typical start here. Yeah, th- and it, he wrote It's My Life by Bon Jovi. So we're going to use this for Affleck, o- this episode for Affleck Origins. Mm-hmm. Like, how did Affleck become Affleck Geddon, which we'll talk about tomorrow. And interesting things in reading up on early Ben Affleck. He So he's born in California moves to Massachusetts at age three, is in Field of Dreams. Really? People forget. Ben Affleck was in Field of Dreams as a, just an uncredited kid. I think he was in the stands at Fenway or something like that. And as I say that now, it makes me think of a propensity Ben Affleck has for making uncredited appearances do you remember the Curb Your, Enthusi- episode, uh, Cur- Curb Your Enthusiasm episode where Larry's trying on pants at Banana Republic and there's a there's a fire alarm so everyone has to leave and he leaves with the pants and then he's like, shit, I stole these pants and they have my pants there and the whole episode is about his pants and uh, I think that's the Officer Krupke episode where he drives by a bunch of kids and he's singing, gee, Officer Krupke, Krupp you. And he gets in trouble because everybody thinks that he's saying fuck you, yelling fuck you to kids that are selling lemonade or whatever. <laughs> but when everybody walks out, Ben Affleck is shopping in the store. <laughs> really? Yeah. And I caught it. I caught it. The fr- in its first airing. I was watching. I think I was in college. We were watching it, and we were like, "Is that Ben Affleck?" And then we waited the rest of the episode to see, like, is there a Ben Affleck storyline here? And there was there. <laughs> And then a couple days later, this was how the internet worked back then. Like, a couple days later, it was like, there was a news story that said, yes, if you thought you saw Ben Affleck That's hilarious. shopping in Curb Your Enthusiasm, that was him. So, he's in Field of Dreams as a kid at a baseball game Okay, from Boston. Everyone knows that about Ben Affleck. He's in a show that blew my mind. He was in an 80s educational program called the the voyage of the mimi or something like that and i looked it up pressed play on an episode to be like okay what what what's ben affleck the child actor like and damn it the second they played the intro music i was like we watched this in fifth grade really my teacher showed this to us in fifth grade i was watching ben affleck damn near every day my teacher didn't feel like teaching a lot the the original affleck week 
Right. Original <laughs> Affleck week. And I remember because the theme was such a banger. And okay. it was a lot of... Actually, it would play well right now. A lot of sea shanty type stuff. Oh, okay. It's about getting on a boat and going out there. I don't remember a thing about the show other than there was a stupid fucking kid. Ben Affleck. Played by ben Affleck. <laughs> and that the song, the theme song was a banger. He then is in uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie. He's in... Dazed and Confused in 93. Everybody knows that. I think that. that's like everyone's first memory of Ben Affleck, unless they're, they were really paying attention in Field of Dreams. <laughs> then, this I think will be the crux of the episode. So, 98 is Armageddon. 98 is Shakespeare in Love. That's his like early Breakout. 90s Joe Pesci, where like he's doing Home Alone. He's doing Goodfellas. Like, you want something good, you get Joe Pesci. He was also, I missed my cousin Vinny there. That would have made more sense to throw that in there. But 98 is Armageddon, which is the real breakthrough. Obviously, 97 is, um, 97 is, what's his Goodwill hunting. biggest movie? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Think of it. Uh, Goodwill Hunting. But 95, after, so post Days and, Confu- Days and Confused, he's in Mallrats and... Then 97, Chasing Amy, and 99, Dogma, which the biggest question I had... So is he not in um, Clerks? I don't believe he was in Clerks. My biggest question in learning a little about early Ben Affleck is how was he... How did he get to be the Peter Dante of (laughs) Kevin Smith movies... In the 90s. Like, that's such a weird... Because we'll talk about the ups and downs of Ben Affleck. He's, like, this huge A-list star. And then, obviously, he has issues. He has, like, a lot of problems. Alcoholism, addiction, Mm -hmm. whatnot. And... But all all the while, like, he's winning for writing, directing, acting, and everything. He's just had such an interesting career. But I find it so insane that kind of at the beginning of it, he was like a goofy, like I'm gonna be in like these goofy ass movies with yeah. like go- like j- jerking jerking around with fucking Kevin Smith, jerking around kind of stoner movies yeah. and and like as a as a guy who like I feel like I'm not all that I'm starting to realize that I'm not all that familiar with Ben Affleck's work totally like goofy. I am I am totally uh I believe I watched Chasing Amy mm-hmm. for the sake of Affleck Week. I don't think that I've seen any of those other Kevin Smith movies. Wow. So I had seen Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. My friends and I watched that movie damn near every day. Okay. It was it made a huge impression on us. And we say whenever something isn't real or whatever, we like a running joke with me and some of my old friends is like, they're fictional characters. Fictional characters. And I didn't realize until I was watching Chasing Amy and like connected all these characters, I was like, Ben Affleck delivers that line in Jay and Silent Bob. And at the time, I think we were just like, oh, Ben Affleck's making a cameo. And we didn't really understand any of it. But Ben Affleck is, uh, what's, his, what's his name? Holden McNeil? Holden, yeah. Holden McNeil. And he, yeah, he's in Chasing Amy. He's a, a cartoon guy or whatever. And we can jump into Chasing Amy if we want, but... First, I just wanted to raise how freaking weird it is. Yeah, that because within a year of chasing Amy, so ninety-seven is chasing Amy, and ninety-eight, Armageddon. That's insane. How do you go? Yeah, from being I keep saying Peter Dante. If I knew other members of the Happy Madison group, I would. I mean, there's like there. Rob Schneider, like, but he's not. Yeah. He, yeah, but there's the uh, there's yeah, the yeah, other. Yeah, I would say Rob Schneider is probably more appropriate. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, but it's but it's, it is wild. Like that is a crazy career arc and uh yeah i and it doesn't strike it, 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 i think like it's just so weird because he as far as i know he doesn't associate with kevin smith all that much anymore like i'd never see them doing stuff yeah like kevin smith i feel like lives in his own universe but like ben affleck was a part of that universe for so long do you think if we got Kevin Smith, if we asked Kevin Smith, he would come on with us? Probably. And talk about the Ben Affleck days? Probably. That'd be cool. How would we get him? Be like, hey, uh, I, we wear hockey jerseys too. Yeah. And they'd be like, sure. 
He'd be like I, uh, I, one of us plays video games. We both like hockey, and so did you. When you watched Chasing Amy, let's talk about Chasing Amy. I'll give you a little warning before Chasing Amy was Affleck week, and by Affleck week, I don't mean what we're doing right now. I mean not very strong, as in not able to pick things up because that movie does not hold up. It does not. Oh my. Gosh, does it not hold up? I uh, we got into chasing Amy, and very quickly, I was like, "Oh my god, this movie is insane! Like, this is problematic." <laughs> very, very uncomfortable movie to to watch now, and very uncomfortable movie to reconcile. As I always bring up, that movie didn't come out to people being like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, that movie came out to people being like. This Affleck guy might have a career. <laughs> Let's put him in the Let's blockbuster continue. next summer. And so what's what doesn't hold up about it is well, t- well the, the premise is Ben Affleck is a comic book guy, meets a comic book girl and she's gay. They become friends. He's in love with her, can't have her. There are some 500 days of summer type of qualities where the guy is kind of talking himself into stuff and the movie intentionally or otherwise is blaming the girl a lot for everything not going exactly the way the guy is telling himself it's going to go so there's some crossover there but just as far as its language it, language is horrible it's kind of overall world view is not great yeah it um uh what's his name uh, Jason, Jason Lee, Lee plays the best friend, mm-hmm. and boy, is that guy just rough around the edges would be the most polite way to put it, but that guy is horrible in this movie. He's just throwing around hard Fs, like, he's just, like, very misogynistic, insanely problematic. Yeah, th- there's... Yeah, like, there, there's nothing redeeming about... I get, that that's, his, I get about... that that's his character, but, like... It's also like, come on! <laughs> and I'm like, how did that guy get anything done? Like, like how did how he, did that guy not get canceled inf- before getting can- like before canceling was a thing? I, I guess I don't know if like the comic book culture was like. I mean, I'll say like that this is a this is 1997, and younger listeners, you will be you you'd be appalled. You just go back and watch this movie or movies from the 90s. Like, it is appalling. When you go back and look at stuff from the 90s, that that's how people talk. That I, I, I would like to hope that his character was excessively bad. Mm-hmm. and that, Because I don't think you're watching other movies. Well, there were other, char- movies other characters seen. in the movie, too, that were like, oh, this guy is just the worst. Yeah, so. but the whole tone of that movie, I mean, even Ben... So Ben Affleck plays the quote-unquote good guy, and there's another gay character in the movie and even when they're talking and they're friends i'm like how is this gay character not telling ben affleck like hey can you can you maybe not call us that every time you would like why why don't you say like you or like gay people why you, you don't always have to use this this word you keep using so it's it's distracting and it's like ben affleck for a guy who is seemingly very good friends with uh with a gay fella, yeah, uh, seems to know absolutely nothing about like how how being gay works. Like yeah. he is asking just absurdly dumb and inappropriate questions to uh the the woman. What's her name? Uh, Alyssa. No, it's not Amy, which is very confusing. Uh, agreed, Alyssa. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's Alyssa. He's like, so you're a virgin? She's like, no. I have sex with women. Yeah. He's like, so you're a virgin because you've never had a penis. And she's like, that's not how this works. Yeah. It's just a very uncomfortable conversation. They're, and they have a lot of those. Yeah. And I was like, this Alyssa character is a, a saint. Like, I fa- like, how are you enter- even entertaining this person? Right. <laughs> I, f- I found it unrealistic, maybe because nowadays, if someone comes at you that's stupid, you're you, you'd be like, a like get the fuck away from me, <laughs> yeah. and b like if you really want to have 
conversations about this, educate yourself a teeny bit. Like, I don't think Google was around back then, but like these characters were so it's stupid. Like, that, ask Jeeves. Right. That she would be like, that it should, she should be like, dude, I'm, I'm sorry that you possess a shocking lack of, of knowledge about this but if you actually want to have conversations about these things then come with at least like a little base a baseline level yeah, knowledge. yeah right so those scenes are tough i mean really most scenes in this movie are are tough and i mean it's an entertaining movie i i was i was entertained it was i was also just like horrified how did people like the movie i think I that mean, it has it, a it pretty has... high score and i think that it, it like I've heard the movie a lot of times, like very referred to very frequently. So I think that people enjoy it. So I also think that it's got, you know, when uh, Ray Kroc in The Founder says to one of the McDonald brothers, he says, uh, like, I could have stolen everything you guys do, but I needed to steal McDonald's. You mm -hmm. know why? What, is, why? what does he say he needed from McDonald's? I don't remember. The name. The name. He said McDonald's. Okay. He's like, it just sounds like it just sounds like a fucking thing, man. He doesn't say it that way, but <laughs> he's like, if I opened up something else and called it the burger, whatever, who cares? McDonald's. That just sounds like what McDonald's should be. Chasing Amy is a great movie title. It is. It just it is. sounds like the name of a great movie. So I think I've also heard it referenced all the time. Rod I'm glad that I've uh, that I've seen it so that now like I don't I don't fall into the trap of being like, "Ah, yes, Chasing Amy, great movie." Oh, I loved it. Yeah, like it's trying to sound intelligent I in particularly the movie. liked uh, the friend. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the shit that you say when you haven't seen a movie. Right, yeah. Strong secondary characters. Yes, really liked the well, I liked the uh <laughs> The, the, I, I liked the, like the gay friend. He was good. Yeah. The uh, the dialogue, awesome. Eighty seven tomato meter. That is so high. Eighty three percent audience score. That's, that is so high. That's very high. But I also wonder if it's from people who haven't seen it in a while. Like I'll tell you <laughs> right haven't, now, or haven't seen like, it. Period. My friends and I loved Jay and Silent Bob growing up. Like that was for our age group. That was like the funny movie for children to watch i bet if i watched it right now because it's the same it's a lot of the same characters and everything i bet i would be ashamed of myself for finding that funny and that, that happens myself but like for this, existing in this the really like w this isn't like a, a, a com i wouldn't say this is a com i mean it's a romantic comedy yeah, yeah, it's a rom-com but yeah. like it is it's not like it it's not like uh sophomoric humor based no no it's not they they work in sophomoric humor they, right. they draw like stoner cartoons or something but, but this does feel like a movie that kind of takes it seriously itself seriously yes um so I, did, I i was looking this whole conversation for my notes on chasing Amy because i did jot a few down um how did Ben Affleck get into this group? <laughs> this movie is Affleck week, meaning week. I made that. Uh, also, he didn't look good in this movie. Uh, bad goatee, bad teeth. The early Affleck look is wild. And my outfit it, right now is inspired is it a tribute? by it. Yeah. Okay. I'm doing, he did a lot of white t-shirt and big. Uh, flannels. Yeah, like flannels, button downs, whatever it may be. I can't make it look I can't make that look happen right now because my big shirts right now are just shirts fit. <laughs> They're yeah. just shirts. Um yeah, I wrote down really homophobic uh bonkers ass shaming. Bonkers. Yeah. yeah. I um he has a goatee in this movie. What's the status of the goatee? <laughs> 500 days of summer qualities blames the girls for just not everything being the way that he wants it. Um the weirdest scene in this movie. So they get together. He ends up, uh, he tells her he loves her. They get together and they have this relationship that is based on the fact that she's been gay her whole life and she's never been with a guy. And that's really important to him for some reason. Then he finds out that she was a very exploratory person prior to meeting him. And he can't deal with that. And then they stop seeing each other and it's... then he gets and then he, he has a falling out with his best friend over it because his best friend hates her 
and just says horrible things about her, horrible things about gay people. Really, which that didn't make character. a lot of sense because like they hit it off at one point in the movie in the early going. Yeah, when they have so they have one of many conversations about like just a, a straight dude's ignorance. Yeah. Um, but she's but he's, but he's, she's and, answering his questions, and, and he's she's like, to, and he's like, I know that I'm stupid, and right. like, I'm just, I'm asking these questions because I want, I want the information, right? And she's like, you're a fucking idiot, but I'm a nice person. I'm gonna yeah. tolerate this for a little bit. So then they start, um, then they actually start trading war stories, and yeah. they start, and they, you're right, they hit they it had, off. They had they're a great time, and they're yeah, an awesome time. But over his courting. Over uh, what's his name? Holden's courting of Alyssa. Banky is like, yo, I hate this. I hate her. I see what you're doing. You're just you're trying to chase something you can't have. You're the he worst. Just, he doesn't want to lose the the homie. Right. So they have a falling out. Then he gets with Alyssa. Everything's great. He finds out that she had a threesome in high school with two guys. He's not happy about that. Confronts her about it at a hockey game, which we were talking before. This was such a weird scene, so weird that I was po- I was convinced. I do this thing when I know that it's a dream sequence. I just pay less attention because I'm like the movie's fucking lying. Why do I'm not gonna? Right. I'm not giving it my my full attention. Let me check some emails, fire off some Affleck week ideas, and you're like six minutes into the scene, and you're like. This, oh, this is real? He confronts yeah. her at, what, a minor league hockey game? A, a, high school hockey game? It seemed like a high school hockey game, honestly. He confronts her, and she yells in front of everybody, like, are that... you asking about, like, this threesome I had? <laughs> yeah, like, I banged these two dudes, blah, blah, blah. They have this argument in the parking lot, which is... I, I think that a lot of people would take away from Chasing Amy the car scene, the rain scene, where mm-hmm. he tells her that he loves her, before they get together, and which that's I like, thought that was a great scene. Like it was, a, it was a great scene, and like he professes his love, and she's like, "What don't you get? I am gay. Like I cannot change this about myself." Right. And and like I was like, "Thank you. I've been waiting for this movie to get there. Like it's just she finally just lays it out. And she's like, "You're a fucking idiot. Right, like, you I am, think you're the nice guy. Why all are you? you want, cha- why you're... are you trying to change me? You and like you're being extremely selfish. And totally. and I was like, "Oh, okay." Okay, we're here. This is great. He walks back to his car. She runs and they kiss. And I'm like, what the fuck are we talking about? Yeah. It just ruined like that entirely like honest, like very vulnerable, authentic, like, yeah. vulnerable scene. And I was like, why did we just do that if we're going to end up erasing it anyway? Yeah, I was watching that scene and I was like, I bet people made fun of Ben Affleck for this scene. If, if they were talking about Ben Affleck at the time. But yeah. I quite rated that scene mm-hmm. because it was it was real. Like when I don't know, like when when like a, a young man gets all like in his feelings and doesn't really know what to do with it. Like they get that like and please like I can already tell you're not saying anything back. <laughs> you're but right, yeah. In case I haven't said it yet, I. Uh, I, I think it's love and like he just like talks too much and everything and I was like this is like yeah like I, I've done that before like every dumb young yeah. man has done that at some point and they like the rejection part was like very grand but I was also like there could just be like a yeah man look I've told you like 20 times yeah uh, like, right. this just isn't yeah. happening yeah. but like she just walks out and then but you're right like just gives it to him with both barrels screams at him and maybe it's because i've seen 500 days of summer so many times and i never got that payoff in 500 days of summer because she was never quite she was never that honest with him even though she was honest the whole way she was never like buddy <laughs> right, yeah. we're not together she, ke- she, she kept the gloves on the entire movie right exactly yeah. but she unloads on him and you're right i, I thought that was a great scene and uh until I, oh, the end like yeah it ruined it for me and then the in like the, the you were talking about the parking lot scene for the the hockey thing the hockey scene that one drove me crazy because like he's just so hung up on like the fact that she had a th- had a threesome and she's more experienced than him and like he's upset and I, I like i was understanding of why he was of like him actually being upset but he was upset for the wrong reasons like 
He's upset that the like oh, like oh you're, he's like slut shaming her totally yeah, yeah, totally right. totally slut shaming her and and the reason to be upset there is like their entire relationship was started based on a lie yeah yeah the, and that's where I would have been like okay he's well within his right to be absolutely pissed and be like this isn't gonna work because what we are doing is completely rooted in a lie yeah I mean he thought that he that. I think also his character is so self-centered, yeah, clearly. Yeah. Um, but I think that uh, part of why that relationship is so important to him is that he was the one that was able to break down. Because he converted Nice her. guy or not, relatively, in this movie. Like Obviously, there's very clear homophobia. That mm-hmm. no matter how many times she says, like, I'm, well, I'm, I'm gay, so this wouldn't work. He is viewing it as... Like, she hasn't overcome this yet, yeah. and I'm the one right. that's going to, to break that down. And when they get together, I think he's like, I saved her, or whatever. There's You're like, only gay because you haven't had this D yet. <laughs> on, uh, yeah. As that's, awful as it yeah. is, like, that's, that's, the attitude. His, yeah. that's where his character is coming from, and it's totally backed up by what you just said, that when he finds out, oh, she had been with guys before, and she lied by saying that she, she hadn't, He's most angry that like, what you banged? Two How could you dudes? fuck other guys? Right. Yeah. Versus. How could you fuck other guys before versus, we like, met? Why didn't you tell me about <laughs> right. this and like hash it out? So they end up hashing it out by him having the weirdest idea in the world, oh, man. which is to bring both Alyssa and Banky together. They sit on the same couch, and he basically says like, "I've brought you here." <laughs> To say, I've been having some problems with both of you. Banky, we, we're we not getting along right now. We usually get along. We're such good buddies. We make the comics together. Alyssa, we are in love. But tell you what, this stuff about me finding out you bang other guys, it really made me mad. And I'm like, this is the... If I were either of these people... I'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Right. How big headed are you that you, you can't have these conversations with us separately? Right. So you can't say. You need to consolidate your fucking personal issues. Right. Like you can't. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> yeah. You can't say, look, Banky, I'm having issues with Alyssa right now, but that's beside the point. Like your issues with Alyssa matter to me mm-hmm. because whether I'm with her or not, You've got shit you need to work on, and if we're not getting along over Alyssa stuff, a lot of it is that I've seen a really ugly side of you. <laughs> Have that conversation right. with him one-on-one, and that, I'm sure, would lead to a fucking blowout, but you're trying to get to the bottom of this. And with Alyssa, I honestly don't know what he can say other than, look, I – what is he saying? Knocked up. Like, I may have reacted unfavorably. <laughs> But but say like, hey, I'm clearly hurt by this, and like that did a number on me. But if we love each other, we'll figure this out. Again, like the issue really shouldn't be you're with other people before me, and I'm not do- doling out relationship advice. I, I I understand being jealous in the present, where you think like, I don't know, is like, is this person like? her friend or whatever if there's reason to suspect that or whatever i'm saying but i never really understand the jealousy of having sex with guys like before before you of like you what you you dated this person five years ago and we didn't know each other (laughs) right what the hell and silent bob of all people ends up raising the point of like hey man you gotta understand when you're with somebody and you're thinking oh, well, I'm not like this other person. I'm not like that other person that they were with. They're with you because they're looking for you. And I'm like, damn, if that isn't Silent Bob dropping some... That was some a good real scene. Real good, the yeah. The diner scene was good. And I rolled my eyes when because once those two got there, Jay and Silent Bob, I don't know if you saw this coming because you weren't a, a Jay and Silent Bob head, but at some point, Bob starts talking. And when he started talking i was like uh here we go he's gonna have all the answers but a couple minutes into his little essentially monologue i was like he was dropping some bars all right bob not bad yeah Yeah, but that's just remember that's just kevin smith bradley coopering himself that's true that's true yeah 
just making himself the the, the good guy the hot one yes yeah and, right <laughs> by the way not the worst idea that he had because that that meeting wasn't the worst idea that he had because the worst idea he had was the cherry on top of that meeting which is saying i think we can solve this by all of us having sex with each other banky you clearly love me and hey if we have a threesome Alyssa, maybe that makes me as wild and crazy as you are just and she's like all right, she like like breaks the fourth wall. She's like, I've been nice enough to all these right, fucking people, yeah. right? Like, you guys aren't gonna think I'm a dick if I lose it on these fucking idiots. And she does. She was just like, Look, you you just don't get it. <laughs> Anything. When she slapped him, I yeah, was like, like, Hell, so it's that, over. And that was she, that was like a stand up in the movie theater and clap moment because it was just like. I've been waiting 90 minutes for this. This is well overdue. She slaps him and she's like, I'm not your whore. I'm not your whore. And I was like, fuck yeah. Good for her. You know, you know what's fucked? When that came out in 97, she slaps him. You and I, clapping. We're watching this now. We're clapping. Moviegoers in 97, she slaps him, says, I'm not your whore. It's they probably, probably turn like- to each other. They're like, Bitch. What do you think? What are our thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah, right. What do we, uh, who's, whose side are we taking here? <laughs> Who, uh, no, I guarantee up? you it's like are a lot of guys just Alyssa? being like, oh, what a bitch. I bet that I, I was very weirded out that whole time because it was a lot of, it was just so 90s <laughs> homophobia. It's, it's an extremely and then, like, the end movie. is, like, the end, it ends on, like, a, well, do they or don't they, they could get back together, and it's, like, please, do not get back together. Like, this is, this relationship is bad for everybody. <laughs> Who's rooting for that relationship? Yeah, it, it ends in a very weird way, which is, he goes to a Comic-Con at mm-hmm. which she's signing. He's gotten out of the business. No, he hasn't. Yeah, he has. No, he hasn't. Oh, that's right. It's a twist. You think yeah. he's gotten out of the business. Uh Banky is talking to what's my man's name? The actor. I forget Great. his name. I, I, I was gonna say this word, but uh, Stacy Oristano, who plays Mindy Riggins, uh, is that her name? Stacy Oristano, uh, follower on Twitter. She tweeted the other day, "Hey, can people stop saying character actors? Hmm. It's insulting." Oh. And I was like, "How? Oh. I'm what? gonna read up on this, but." Sure, I'll stop saying it. Um, she said she said every ca- every that's true. Ca- every character is or every a character. actor is an act character actor because right. they play characters. But I think char- so. Character actor suggests like he does that one thing, mm-hmm. or like he plays this role. But the guy I'm talking about is from Boy Meets World. He's from Wolf of Wall Street. You'd know from, some. Remember the Titans. Remember the Titans. He's uh, uh, Ethan S- Suppley. Suppley? Yeah. Yes, Ethan Suppley. Otherwise known as the great Louis Elastic. Okay. From Remember the Titans. Oh, I thought you... Okay. I thought when you said Louis Elastic, I was like, did he get eye surgery? Did he, have, <laughs> he got, got good eyesight? <laughs> Maybe. He doesn't wear glasses That's in true. any of his movies. He does not. We'll have to also, that guy's ripped now. Really? Yeah, he's jacked. He seems like a great... I keep wanting to say character actor but he's a great actor he's uh bugging banky about hey what happened with you in in holden and he's like i don't know we don't talk anymore holden's there looking at him across the room they're making eyes at each other they're doing they're doing like finger guns yeah very flirty Mm -hmm. although it's established that does kind of like it's like did you guys actually like follow through on that 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 idea that you had ben yeah, that movie. If that movie weren't so homophobic, it could have been. It was, as you said, it was like a interesting movie. I'm least. glad that I watched it just so that I can like say that I've watched it. You see Chase and Amy last night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> see the new episode of Chase and Amy. Pretty good. Uh, they could not make a Chasing Amy series right now. But yeah, again, if that movie weren't so homophobic, some of the things would be interesting, such as like the borderline romance between Banky. And Holden, but like they're making eyes at each other, they're kind of flirting a little bit from across the room, and like uh, Holden waves, walks away. Kind of a cool scene where Banky is talking to Ethan Suppley, and his answers are more kind of for Holden across the room. He's like, "Yeah, 
I'll see you around. I'll see you. Yeah. <laughs> Sometime. Yeah. All right, bye, Holden. Like, shit like that. Uh, I mean, Ethan Supley. <laughs> uh, then, Holden, really just making the rounds to this Comic-Con, goes to Alyssa, who has a new book, and he gives her a book that he made that is based entirely on their relationship that he is selling. That There's so many weird moves in this movie that I think the movie rewards as, like, good. Yeah. Good job. All the characters will like it. <laughs> right. And you're like, what the hell? If somebody came up to me and was like, hey, I've made something about uh, you without your permission. And, and uh, it looks exactly like you. It looks it. exactly like me. I didn't make any effort to hide our likenesses. I put in the on the first page. Doesn't it say like yes. to Alyssa? Yeah. I Wherever you, you are. And yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Or something like that. Uh, also, it is in circulation. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> And she starts crying when she gets it. Probably like, my parents why, why are the gonna read fuck this? Is, <laughs> like, why, why did I meet these people? <laughs> and when will the bad things stop happening? She just cries, and then she leaves, or he leaves. Someone's like, "Hey, who is that?" She says, "Some guy," and that's the end of the movie. I'm like. Damn, Affleck week is so weird. <laughs> uh, yeah, that this movie like had so many moments where I was like, "Does Kevin Smith get it? Like, does he? Is, are they gonna come around and like?" And I feel like they almost do. Like, obviously there are problematic things, and they address them. Like Ben Affleck halfway through the movie is like, "Yo, you gotta you gotta watch your language. Like, it is." It's reflecting very poorly on you. Yeah. And, like, I feel like there are so many of those, like, half acknowledgments that what they're doing and presenting is fucked up. But then, like, they continue doing fucked up shit and they keep rewarding it. Yeah. It's kind of, I mean, I not the same, but in going back and watching, like, old Tarantino movies, because during the pandemic I was like, ah, oh, you know what, I'm going to start watching, I'm gonna, I want to make sure I see all the tarantino movies and there's just so much stuff there that you're like what was anyone thinking like is there a but that's tarantino though like he does shock right, value like for the sake still... of shock value right i guess yeah i think unfortunately the 90s were kind of just independently shocking on their own yes. like they didn't they didn't even need the like we're doing it for the sake of it it's just appalling but so that's 90 that's 97 that is 97 Affleck, and within one year, he is looking a lot thinner mm -hmm. because he, he looks, like, kind of crummy. In the, like, he doesn't look yeah, very hot in no. Chasing Amy. No, he's got bad – his his teeth aren't great. I didn't notice the teeth. His was... teeth aren't great. Uh, the 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 goatee sucks. Yeah. He's got a little, like, got a little weight on him, mm -hmm. and he's just, like, doesn't present himself – all that great. Although I wonder how much of that is like for the character. True. You know who looks right, like the, the writer. Right, yeah. You know who looks great in that movie? Who? Joey Lauren Adams. Is that uh is that Alyssa? Alyssa. Yeah. Wh Beautiful. Who, who is, is that? She? Yeah, like I know I've seen her in several things. She does she does come off as a uh I can give you a, a little crossover. I said that he's the Peter Dante yeah. of the of the Kevin Smith movies. Yeah, she's in a movie with Peter Dante. Which one? Very popular one. She's out of your league. Is Peter Dante in that movie? Yeah, he is. Really? Yeah. Get out. Are you doing? No, I'm pretty. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure he is. Where I lie. No, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm pretty sure he is. Really? Yeah. If you're you, you this, that's so unbelievable and not true. Peter Dante, IMDb. Peter Dante. She, he's not in. She's out of my league. You're right. He's not. <laughs> Did you think that? I thought he was. He could have been. Yeah. What would he have been like? A TSA guy? He's some stupid role. Yeah. They find a role for him. Yeah. He's a uh, he's a role actor. Mm -hmm. You could put him in there. Uh, she, J Joey Lauren Adams is the love interest in Big Daddy. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um. No. She. You know who she is. Who? 
she is like I don't want to say that she's discount Renee Zellweger because like Ooh. because <laughs> Renee Zellweger is like kind of discount Renee Zellweger, not a big Zellweger guy, but they have like similar um they have similar vibes. I could I could see it. The voice is quite similar. The okay. voice is very like high like high, high voice. Yeah. High voice. Um her highest rated movie is 1997's Chasing Amy. Mm-hmm. Her lowest rated movie. Oh boy. Ooh. Biodome 1996 with a 4%. So oh, no. if we ever do Adams Week do we skip that one or do we see it? No, we got to see it. We should try to make sure that we see the lowest rated Ben Affleck movie, which oh, I know what that's going to be. We'll we'll definitely see that for this week. What? Ben Affleck probably did the lowest rated movie ever. Oh, Geely? Wow. I thought it would be Geely. His lowest rated with a 0% is The Leisure Class. The Leisure Class. From 2015. Color Me Intrigued. 2015? There is so... That's late Affleck. That's... Yeah. That's post-Argo Affleck. Holy shit. That's like hot off Argo. Did you win Best Director? I believe so. I wonder if there's going to be a part of Affleck Week where we acknowledge... Wait, I don't know if he won Best Director, but he... I mean, Argo won Best Picture. His actual chops. Let's see. Um, Ben Affleck, Wikipedia page. Democratic party do you know that he's a liberal guy i did know that, you know that i've seen the, i've seen the bill maher uh uh segment so we'll hit on it probably for wednesday's episode ben affleck from cambridge massachusetts uh, quite quite the lib quite the lib um let's see he golden globes uh he won Best Director at the Golden Globes for Argo and Best Motion Picture Drama, but let's look at the uh, one that matters, Teen Choice. No, he <laughs> he was won an Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay, Goodwill Hunting, and Argo, Best Picture. Those are the only the only Oscar wins. Those are the only Oscar wins for Affleck. That's an interesting. That's an interesting mantle. Yeah. That's an interesting trophy case for Affleck. So he has never no won anything awards. for acting, yeah. Well, I think part of that is he makes seemingly historically questionable choices. I've been I've been since since Affleck week was ago, every person I've talked to, I've made sure to bring up Ben Affleck to see like what does Ben Affleck mean to you? What do you think of Ben Affleck? And I was talking to one of my friends yesterday and he was like to me, it's just that he was the hugest A-list, hot, put him in your movies guy, and then seemingly he made a, made a ton of bad decisions, most notably with Gili. But that was like you're making a movie with your partner and whatever. Like you, it's a, it's, a, it's you can easily write that like off. You yeah. can just be like, okay, that was that was a bad idea. Yeah, you're like, this is what what happens when. J Lo and Ben Affleck <laughs> right, are in love. Yeah. Like the, the, two two <laughs> incredible hot things come together to make a hot mess, if you will. Mm-hmm. That movie was Affleck week in that people watched it and they said, "What's this week shit?" <laughs> when they were watching it. So that's the lowest rated class. Uh, sorry, movie the Leisure class. He's got a lot of low. Got a lot of misses. Yeah, we, we're gonna have to see. What was the one when we had Santiago on? the actor who played Santiago on Friday Night Lights, and he said, oh, yeah. I'm in an upcoming Ben Affleck movie, and he gave a couple of hints and then said, if you know what I mean, and both of us were like, we got gotcha, you, bud. <laughs> and then after, we were like, did you know what he was referencing? I didn't know what he was... No. Yeah, it was, was a gangster movie. Uh, a gangster movie that did not do super well. It was like in uh, something in the night. That's right. It was called Live by Night. Live That's by a Night. 35 on Rotten Tomatoes. The leisure class is zero percent. Uh, runner runner is seven percent. To the wonder is forty seven percent. To the walls is ninety nine percent. People like that one. I was thinking about it earlier, and I was like, I don't know how good of an actor Ben Affleck is. I also was strongly wondering that, and have also asked people that, like movie people. Haven't gotten a lot of 
answers, a lot of firm answers on is he a good actor? Because he's clearly talented. He's very talented. He's succeeded. Uh, he's talented and he's like palatable. Like whenever I watch a Ben Affleck movie, my problem isn't Ben Affleck. That's that's true. It's so I think that he is just like a good enough actor at the very least. You want to know good some, enough. You want to know something crazy? Armageddon, 38 on Rotten Tomatoes. That's not true. That's insanity. That's not true. It is true. I don't believe you. It is true. Wanna Look, I, I won't get mad at you. Peep, peep the screen. 38%. 73% audience score. 38%? I can't wait to talk about Armageddon. That might be, like, one of the most underrated movies. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah, if, yeah. You, if you are going to say judges agree, yeah, it's thirty eight percent out of one hundred, and that's got to be yeah. uh, one of the like biggest brunch scores. Right, right, big difference. Yeah, Reindeer Games is a twenty five percent of Rotten Tomatoes. Also, patrons, I don't know if we asked you if did we say like what do you need us to see what do you need us to make sure we talk about tell us if there's a movie that's going to fit into the, like, the we'll just give you the loose schedule right now so today monday is affleck origins tuesday will be affleck geddon wednesday cambridge massachusetts thursday affversity like the the trials and tribulations of the acting career of Ben Affleck. And then Friday will be some fun free for all. Mm-hmm. It'll be a lot of fun, but let us know things that we should cover. Like, because a lot of these, I mean, tell you what, like a lot of these fit into adversity. Yeah. Thursday might be the longest episode. <laughs> Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, that got a 53. Pearl Harbor, 24%. People just hate Ben Affleck movies. Geely, 6%. That's way higher than I would expect it to be. Daredevil, definitely want to make sure we watch. I've, I've, I was a fan of Daredevil. You saw Daredevil? Yeah. I've not seen Multiple that movie. Multiple times. Okay, so yeah. I'll, I'll see Daredevil. We'll have to see Gigli for sure. Jersey Girl, someone said we should watch. I know there's a movie that he did with... Um, oh, he's in Clerks 2, interestingly enough. The There's a movie that he did with, um, with Justin Timberlake. Really? And, yeah. What was it? I don't know. We'll have to look, but... Maybe that was the Leisure Club one. 